night, the city. It's always night in the city in the story because it was the day you'd be at work. A lone man in a suit wanders home. It's too dark. There's steam everywhere, and the streets are wet for some reason. Probably the steam. He turns a corner into an alley looking for a shortcut to get where he's going, but we know where he's going, right into the shit. Two dudes in wool jackets and limp hats, which makes me wonder what the temperature situation here is. Are the dudes jumping the guy too hot? Is the guy in the suit too cold? It's too late, because there's crime happening. They pull knives. He takes out his wallet. He pleads, come on, guys, I got a family. They laugh. Of course they do. They got control. Off into the night, they run to pick through the wallet like a rotisserie chicken from Costco. Where is the justice? Where is the comeuppance? Oh, it's there. You just didn't see it until now. Hiding in the shadows. Always watching. A protector, a leader. The only one who gives a damn. But he hides because you got to sneak up on crime or it'll turtle and disappear. The wool-suited, possibly balmy thieves look around in fear. Now who's in control, you goons? What was that? A rat? Nay, a bat! Or is it a man? It's both, you plugs! In a confusion of jacked biceps bedecked in the kind of rubber you find on truck tires, the villains are tossed around like the sweat socks that they are. Meanwhile, in the alley, that guy in the suit stands up, bruised and annoyed. Why the hell does he live in this fucking city? Just then, a wallet falls from the sky and it splutes at his feet. He looks up just in time to see a man-sized bat fly over his head. And he doesn't know whether to be grateful or to shit himself. Probably both, because he just saw Batman. Like the Batman. Like, you gotta be specific. And it's not me saying that. Like, no matter how far along on the Bat timeline we are, sometimes it's the 1940s, sometimes it's the future, sometimes it's the 90s and everything is sweaty because Frank Miller was hot or something when he drew it. <laughs> Whatever Bat juncture we're at, no matter what, you can bet there will be a person that refers to him as the Batman. As if there's somebody else out there with the last name Batman. Like a Saul Batman. So you gotta be specific when you call Batman because Saul has an early morning and he really needs his eight hours. Now I hear you. Batman is totally a last name and a lot more common than you'd think. According to the 2010 census, 0.2 eighths of a person out of 100,000 people have the last name Batman ranking it the 28,525th most common last name, which sounds low, but that's like out of 300 plus million, and that was back in 2010. What are the stats now? I couldn't find them, and of course I couldn't. They're all Batmans. <laughs> and who wouldn't want to be Batman? Since March 30th, 1939, when the editors of National Comics Publication saw the success of Superman in their action comics and went, yeah, that's what boys are into, strong men in tights, which was true, but not for the reasons they thought. <laughs> in comes Bob Kane with his idea for a Batman, a blonde dude in a domino mask, betighted in red with wings inspired by Da Vinci's flying machine. Then his colleague at the time, Bill Finger, was like, K, but like maybe he actually looks like a bat though, which was a good call. Because if they had gone with the original design, he would have been a lot more whimsical. Kind of like the Hamburglar's more attractive Swedish brother. <laughs> Bill Finger comes up with the cowl, a cape, gloves, a backstory, and a secret identity that he named after Robert the Bruce and Mad Anthony Wayne. And finally, he's given the rich gentry some notoriety. At last, it was the rich guy saving the day. And not just some fucking peasant like the rest of us. Bruce Wayne, the Batman. As you can imagine, it did pretty fucking well, because here we are 83 years later and we're still fucking talking about it. So well did the Dark Knight detective that National Comic Publications was just called Detective Comics. You see, Superman was in the action comics, Batman was in the detective comics, and those were cooler because they had Batman. Now, they're just called DC, and people have stronger opinions about what they do, or so says the comment section, which is why I have my notifications off. <laughs> and then, Bob Kane took all the credit. And it wasn't until 2015 that Bill Finger was given co-creation credit on a Batman comic. And 2016 for his name to be in the credits under Created By, which is both awesome and a bummer 
Because that movie was Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice, which could have been a Chris Columbus Christmas comedy set in the 80s because it was basically about two dudes in onesies fighting for two hours before learning the true meaning of whatever. I stopped paying attention. But <laughs> instead, they made the like Range Rover of superhero movies. Top heavy, weird looking, and unnecessarily expensive. Which is everything Batman is not. That's the Bob Kane Batman. The Bill Finger Batman is the Batman. The first Batman comic was called The Case of the Chemical Syndicate. There, now you can crush Trivia Night. You're welcome. <laughs> he got his signature utility belt, which is just like a fanny pack for the Best Buy Geek Squad technician that moonlights as a ninja, in July of 39. The Batarang came around, get it, in September, along with his first bat transportation, which was the bat plane, not the Batmobile, because yeah, he looks fly in that whip, but fuck you, he's rich. He's going plain first. That's how the 1% lives, mortals. Then in November of 1939, Bill Finger introduced the story of Bruce Wayne's parents being murdered. Spoilers. And for some reason, we have to constantly be reminded of that in Batman movies, because apparently DC thinks we've all been men in black, which we have not, because that's a Marvel property, and they're doing just fine. <laughs> then, Bill Finger figured that Batman needed a Watson, because even though he's a secret, he's gotta have someone to talk to. Mental health care is self-care, everybody. Batman says so. <laughs> so in April of 1940, everyone's favorite, what the fuck are you doing here, guy, is introduced, and that's Robin, the boy wonder, and he became Batman's ward. Sales doubled, and the kid's sidekick was born, ushering in an era of man-boy questionable relationships. I'm just saying, I saw that Michael Douglas Liberace movie, and I got questions. The first solo spinoff called The Batman, so you knew what you were buying, is in its first issue, into DC introduced us to everybody's favorite ex, Catwoman, and the jittery god among incels who completely missed the point of the movie, The Joker. So yeah, TikTok trolls, having more than one villain in a Batman story is fucking vintage. Calm down. It's how well they do that matters. And it also marked the moment when editor Whitney Ellsworth decided that Batman should stop using guns and start getting clever. And that, Dad! was the golden age of comics and Batman. There, just saved you a few thousand bucks and a trip to Comic-Con. After that, well, you're a human living today. You know who fucking Batman is. Even if we didn't say it too loud because he's supposed to be a secret. Wealthy playboy turned CrossFit detective working out his trauma on the criminals of Gotham. And probably the most relatable of superheroes because his superpower isn't flying or something from another planet. He's just real good at confusing people. Like, any time the Batman does a thing, the people he did a thing to somehow never know how to talk about the thing he did. Like, they're like, it was a man out of the sky. Looked like a bat. And he was a man. I don't know. I, it was, I, I fucking I don't know any way else to describe it. <laughs> Which they all know damn well. He's a rich dude in Kevlar just fucking around with unlimited credit and a family discount at some 90s gadget depot like Sharper Image. Of course it works. Because if you're doing a crime, that's definitely not a thing you're expecting. Not to mention that a wealthy-to-do, old-money rich guy thwomping a guy for boosting cars because the wealth distribution's so fucking slanty that it breeds guys that boost cars is actually irony, which is the scariest thing in books. <laughs> He's even scary in books. And no one knows who he is, so it's a game of fucking Clue amongst the elite of Gotham. Maybe you're the Batman, but you can't be the Batman, otherwise you'd be the Batman. Are you the Batman? If you were, would you tell anyone? But we know who the Batman really is. Or was, because he's been played by nine actors in the face so far. Lewis Wilson, Robert Lowey, Adam the Bod West, Michael the King Keaton, Val did fine, Kilmer, George, who let you in here, Clooney, Christian, no jokes, he's serious, Bale, Ben the Dark Knight, Affleck, and Robert Sparklenuts Pattinson. <laughs> and that is not counting the voices, atop which stands Kevin Conroy, who will always be the voice of Batman. I hear in my head, even when I'm trying to sleep, that's how good he is. 16 movies, one swinging 60s TV show, the definitive animated series, and a bunch of others later. And here we are, the third Saturday in September, designated officially as Batman Day. A day to do all things Batman, walk in the rain, save a life, stop a crime ring, brood, or just pop on the baseball tee you got at Comic-Con and listen to Prince. Doesn't matter how you do it, just take a second. And honor not just the man, not just the bat, but the symbol. What it stands for. A protector, a leader, a clever, crime-fighting, rooftop-jumping, swinging, 
damaged emo cool guy that just wants to save you. A shredded example of what the rich could be if they just took a judo class and bought out a spirit Halloween store. <laughs> Today, all of us can be the Batman. I love you. Good night. Chad the Bird, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Happy Batman.